Why do you think what you said had such an incredible impact? Because you did it quite sympathetically, actually. You were careful in the way that you assertively attract, uh, attacked a comment, but you did it with some sensitivity. I think that's why. I think that's one of the reasons why. Uh, I think another of the reasons why is that we live in a society in which adults are afraid of children. And so when you see someone who's speaking to young people in the, on their turf at a college, at a university, um, and who's prepared to speak truth to them, but to do it in a way that's got a bit of humor, a bit of levity, that tries to meet them where they're at and says, look, I know this is what you think. Here are some things you probably haven't thought about. Um, I think that's quite appealing to people because as I say, we live in a society where we're fearful uh, of telling young people what we think and what perhaps they need to hear. Uh, so I think that's another of the reasons. And the third reason is I tackle very directly uh, the doomsday narrative about climate change and net zero. Uh, and I explain to people the reality of that issue and how that isn't, isn't going to be addressed. Uh, so uh, the fact that no one has ever told these people in the UK who glue themselves to roads and throw soup on paintings and whatever that this country is responsible, produces 1% of global emissions and is responsible for another 1%, so 2%. You know, the idea of killing pensioners every winter with fuel poverty doesn't seem as appealing if you recognize that it has absolutely no impact on global warming whatsoever. Um, so I think it's the combination of all of those three. And, you know, hopefully, uh, if I say so myself, someone's trying to use logic. We don't have a lot of that going on lately. And I also think that, as you say, the sensitivity to other people and to, you know, trying to exp find a way to connect, not to point, point the finger and say, you're stupid, you're woke, you're this, you're that, but to say, look, here are some things, here are some rational arguments about where you may want to modify your thinking. Um, I think that's why. And actually, one of the most gratifying things that has happened since is I've had a lot of contact with a lot of people who anyone watching this conversation would be shocked that are even prepared to speak to me. Um, people reach out to me and go, you know what, I can see that you're trying to win people over. Let's talk. Uh, from a lot of people who, 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 who a lot of people sort of on our side, if you like, if there is such a thing, would consider like the enemy. I think that's the thing that I'm really, really keen to get past is we've got ourselves locked into, you know, they call it the culture war. And once you start calling something a war, it's very difficult to see the humanity of people on the other side. Um, I always try and make this point. I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe this isn't true for you. But I know that when I was 20 years old, I was stupid and arrogant and thought I knew everything and I had the solutions to everything. And I was well, you only thought it. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> You knew, right. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of how it is, yeah. right? So we got to remember that, you know, young people are like that. Uh, and some of them are persuadable. Some of them, not all of them, of course, but some of them are. Let's try and persuade them. It does tell you something about the way in which we now educate, raise and educate our young people. Um, that in a sense, what you did was to put up an alternative moral proposition as well, as I saw it. You know, you're really saying, well, if you pursue policies single-mindedly thinking the only thing challenged before us is climate change and we've got to turn ourselves inside out, well, what happens if that results in people in the rest of the world starving? Because it can. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a moral dimension as well. But it's also a practical one, isn't it? because they won't care about the environment. That's one aspect of it. So there's a, there are alternative moral perspectives for young people who are idealistic and care about moral issues. But then there's a very hard-nosed practical one. If you really want to ensure that climate change policy is demolished, break down the liberal global order mm -hmm. and allow the autocrats what they want, which is domination of global politics. That's right. And I think... The you know a bit about that from... Well, I mean, if the Russians and the... No, no, I don't say the Russian people and the Chinese people, but their the regimes, who run those countries, the people yeah. who run those countries, if they have say, 
Well, you're not going to advance arguments about climate change very effectively. Mm -hmm. And that is at stake now because they are plainly seeing us as degenerate, as lost, as ineffective, divided, ill-disciplined. And they're right. We are all those things. We should be aware that we are all those things. And the reason that I've been speaking about this and the reason you speak about this is that that is the path that we're sliding down that slope. And either we stop it, uh, or all those things that people care about are, are gonna go in, in, in the dustbin of history along with our civilization. Mm -hmm.